I'm going to do random pulls for Hong Kong Mahjong. If you are new to Hong Kong Mahjong, look for links in the video description below to a lesson playlist and to where you can download this player reference, which has all the scoring and how to play the game. If you're new to Mahjong or if you already know how to play and just want to build your skills, consider subscribing to my channel. That way you won't miss anything. We're going to do four random pulls. One for each wind of the round, starting with east round. We'll roll these dice to determine which player we are. I rolled a six, so we're going to be player two. You just count around the table. One, two, three, four, five, six. Player two. So we're in seat two, which is south. This is east, south, west, north. So we're in south seat and the wind of the round is east. Those could come into play depending on the tiles we get. For non-dealer, we're going to get 13 tiles. Okay, for these tiles, we have two single cracks. We have five dots, including a pung, three of a kind, if you don't already know. Then we have six bams, two chows here and here, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine. If I were playing at a zero point table, I would play all chow. All chow would be three in a sequence. There's one, two, there's a potential chow, a pair you've already always got to have a pair and then we would need one more chow in here somewhere so probably I would play mixed suit all chow we have one two three four blocks we need another chow so I think what I would probably do is discard the one and the nine and hold the four because since it is in the middle of the sequence we might be able to draw in a good chow tile for this one these are on the edge so only a seven eight or a one two respectively would work here but here we could have two two through six around this tile and use it for a chow so many more tiles available for this not so much here so i would start by discarding these hold this for a potential chow if this comes in chow and then build here all chow. Since we have no flowers, that's another fawn. So all chow, no flowers would be one, uh, two fawn. Now, if we were playing at a table where there's a three fawn minimum, which equates to eight points, we would need to pick a suit or try for all pung. And here we have only one multiple, a pung. We have no other pairs. So probably if I were playing at a table where we need three fawn, I would focus on bams, hold this for as long as possible in case we pair up and then we could play all pung and leverage that. Otherwise, I would just discard these, focus on bams, one suit. I would also collect honors because a half flush would be one suit with honors. If we were playing at a three fawn minimum table, this would be a really hard start. For all chow though, zero point minimum, this could be a winner. Chow, chow, potential chow pair. All we really need is this right here. So that was east round. We're going to do south round. This time we're going to be in north seat since I rolled an eight.
we have a flower, a two flower, we won't get any score for that. Since we're player four, we would need a flower with a four on it. So for these tiles, we have a pair of nines, five dots, three bams, three cracks. If I were playing at a zero point table, I would try for all chow. Here we have a potential chow. These are all isolated. Here's a pair and a potential chow. We have one, two blocks. This, is, this would be a hard start right here. I think what I would do at a zero point table is play all chow and just try to build around the tiles we have, the number tiles, get rid of these first. So that's what I would do if we were playing at a zero point table. If we're playing at a three fawn minimum, eight points, I probably would focus on dots and honors. So I would hold the honors and the dots and discard those. Six discards, which is significant. So we would be an underdog here because we only have two blocks here to work with and only one pair. So this would be very challenging. You gotta start somewhere. Since we have five dots, I think that's where I would start. South round, one red dragon. If we paired up and punged, that could be two fawn because any pung of dragons is a fawn. A pung of your seat wind is a fawn. Half flesh is three fawn. If we pair up other tiles, we could maybe play all pung, but we only have one pair. So I think I would start discarding all those and focus on dots. Dots and honors. West round. I rolled an eight, so we're going to be player four again. Okay, this will be interesting because we have a lot of BAMs. We have one, two, potential chow, two, three, potential chow, four, five, potential chow, six, eight, potential chow, one, two, three, four blocks. So we need a three here, a one or a four here, a three or a six here, and a seven here. And it's all flexible. So for example, we could put the three here. We need a three in the middle there. Here we could do a four or a seven. That is left isolated. So there's some flexibility here. The other potential is all pung. We have one, two, three pair. One guideline I've been told is for all pung to start out with four pair. We're short a pair. We have one, two, three blocks for all pung. So I would sacrifice these and go for full flesh or half flesh if we can get a pair of dragons or maybe even pair up and pung and then be left with a pair, maybe here. Pair, we have a chow, potential chow, single. I think it'd be better to break these up and chow, maybe try for a full flesh. Full flesh is six fawn. North round. I rolled a three. So we're gonna be in west seat this time.
north round, west seat. We have no flowers, so that's a fawn. If we're playing at a zero point table, I would probably focus on number tiles. We only have two potential chows here and here. There's a pair, always got to have a pair, but these would be isolated and they're edge tiles. So I would start by discarding these and focus on number tiles and try to do all chow. If we are playing at a three point or three fawn minimum, I think I would pick a suit since we have mostly cracks. I probably would start there. Hold the honors for value because if you pair up a dragon, you can get a fawn for that. The south is not going to bring us any value, but if we pair up and pung, it can help us get to a half flush. So I would start by discarding these. Focus on cracks. Chow, pung, gather, build. If you are new to Hong Kong Mahjong, start with the fundamentals. Look for a link in the video description below. And don't forget to download this player reference. Once you have an understanding of how to work with the tiles and build a hand, four blocks and a pair, the blocks can be three in a sequence, three of a kind, or four of a kind. If you have a set of tiles at home, give this exercise a try because it will help. Then when you're ready to play, go to Mahjong Time. If you don't have an account at Mahjong Time yet, I do have some VIP codes. You can try it out for free for 30 days. Just look for my email in the video description below. When you're there, look for the zero point minimum tables because you can start playing even with chicken hands, no value, four blocks and a pair of anything, any combination. It's a great way to practice making decisions and you're on a timer playing with other people. So it's kind of like a playground. Just get used to playing the game. When you're ready to take it up a notch, then play at the tables where there's an eight point minimum, which equates to three fawn. You've got to be able to account for three fawn. So you need to learn the scoring. If you do not qualify with that three fawn and you try to win, you will chombo which is an error and you will be penalized. So make sure that you know the scoring if you play at one of those eight point minimum tables. If you have any questions, just write in the comment section below or watch all my random pull videos and the, the uh, solitaire videos, as well as the strategy theory videos. All of those will help you gain an understanding of the game and also get comfortable with the decision-making that goes on. So there are a lot of variables to consider. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do, that way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next set of random polls for Hong Kong Mahjong, may all your picks be keepers.